Welcome to the Lancaster Patriot Podcast. My name is Chris Hume, the managing editor of the Lancaster Patriot, and I'm joined today by Pastor Joel Saint, who pastors Independence Reform Bible Church in Lancaster County. Joel, thanks for joining me. Glad to. Podcast today is brought to you by Park Hill Jewelry, located in Ephrata, right here in Lancaster County. They specialize in custom-made designs to meet all your, your jewelry needs. Uh, for over 30 years, Park Hill Jewelry has been one of the most trusted names in jewelry in Central PA. They have a great selection, a lot of different options. I've been in there multiple times myself. Uh, they got bridal sets, engagement rings, pendants, wedding bands, you name it, they have it. Or they can get it from you. Bernie over there at Park Hill has a great network. He can get you what you need. So go to parkhilljewelry.com or go over to 5 West Main Street in Ephrata and check out Park Hill Jewelry. Well, Joel, today we're going to talk about what's going on or what's not going on in the Pennsylvania House. So as most of our listeners are probably aware, the Pennsylvania House of Representatives uh, is not in session, and the Republicans in particular have been sending out emails uh, calling on uh, their constituents to call on the other side of the aisle to get them back to work. So we want to talk about today. Back to work. Back to work. Yeah, back to work for the, to get in the, the people's business. All right. So okay. they're not working for us right now, Joel. So I don't know if, if that's, uh, if you're sad about that or happy about that. So we'll, we'll discuss that today. Um, now we want to talk a little bit about you know, Representative Brian Cutler briefly. Um, basically, you know, these legislators, um, we need them and we need them to get back to work. That's kind of what's going on here. So I want to read a couple things, and then we'll get into this and try to address this from a biblical perspective, especially as it relates to the role of the civil magistrate and uh, in our culture and, and historically saying, hey, the legislator is the, that's the, the end-all, be-all of government, and we need these, these men and women uh, to make more laws for us. So let me just read a couple things here. This is from... <clears throat> Uh, Representative Mindy Fee's email, and this might kind of be standard from some of the, the representatives in the GOP. But she says this in the email, I joined most of my fellow House Republicans this week in signing on to a letter that uh, will be called back, that we be called back to the state capitol to do the people's business. Unfortunately, we were one signature shy of what we needed to require the speaker to bring us back into session. That means we are unable either to introduce or vote on legislation, end quote. What a pity, you know? They <laughs> yeah, what, what, what great thing, I'm curious, is, is going to happen? Um, I mean, I, I, on the way here this morning, I stopped and got gas. It, um, let's see, I was able to go shopping this past week. Um, able to drive here. What great thing is... is is not going to happen if they don't get back in session. I'm curious. Well, they're going to make your life better, right? If they if they can't get back in session, then the argument goes they're not going to be able. You're they won't be able to make your life better. Yeah, but what is it they have to do? What great impediment here? I mean, it's true that okay, this this is true. I, I <laughs> I'm driving here this morning and I came along kind of a back road, and I couldn't help but think of the. Um, uh, of the legitimacy even of local government, mm -hmm. municipal government, which, uh, which maybe we can talk about later. But, um, okay, so I'm coming up on this road, right? And there's one of those road guys with a stop sign, mm -hmm. right? With the, the flips stop and slow, right? And at first I see the stop sign, I'm like, uh, well, I don't think this road needs to be resurfaced. That sometimes doesn't stop people, but it doesn't matter, right? So, okay, I saw what was going on. And what was happening was there were three guys all together, Right, two guys, you know, one guy each with a stop sign, one on the other side, one guy here, right? And then in the middle, there's a guy in a tractor, right? And he's got one of those long extended arms that, uh, that reaches over the guardrail and cuts down the foliage or whatever weeds that are growing up, right? Little mini trees, right? And I'm thinking to myself, three guys to do this, and you're slowing down cars, and there's a little bit of danger involved, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're an obstacle on the road, right? Could not one guy get in there, seriously, with a, a chainsaw and probably do the job faster? Right. Right. But government's making my life actually not better at that moment. But anyway. Yeah, well, I think we'll have plenty of, plenty of examples of that. And I want to address that because people, one of the things, one of the main things they're leaning on is, well, there's a couple of reforms that we need to make here. And if we can't get back to work, 
we're not going to be able to solve your problem. So I want to address that, and I think we'll have an opportunity to. I want to just read a few more things to set the stage here. Uh, this is from Representative Cutler's email, who, of course, this is, I mean, you, you couldn't write this stuff. It's, it's, it's comical, the fact that Representative Cutler voted for the Democrat speaker, and, and now he's here complaining that the Democrat speaker is preventing them from meeting. I mean, you couldn't, I mean, you, Cutler's a great politician, by the way, which we'll talk about later. Uh, he's definitely doing what politicians do. He's, uh, he's cutting deals. He's uh, betraying his constituents, and he's staying in office. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah great politician. But he, he said this. He said, we have important work to do, not only to help victims of child sexual abuse, but also to boost our economy. So I want, I want us to think about these things, and we'll talk about them as we go. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt. I know you got a lot going there, but I, I'm, I'm annoyed already. This is just really bad. Um, can you read that first one again, his first priority? We have important work to do, not only to help victims of child sexual abuse. Okay, so stop right there, right? How about we have important work to do, we have to seriously punish perpetrators of child sexual, sexual abuse. Oh, no, 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 but now we, th this is actually a good thing for the government. Now we're going to spend a whole bunch more money with therapy and all manner of nonsense to help the victims. Yeah, and I think, I mean... Oh. I think, and I agree with you, I think part of this is one of the reforms which Rozzi was supposed to be big on, that, that I think it's extending the statute of limitations so that those who are abused could seek... Um, okay, well, know, I hope but, that's the case. But, but yeah. even so, to your point, we're not dealing with the, perp you know, the perpetrators of these things. So, so e even if we do that, we have all these, these laws and legislation. All we do when, when we have someone of, of sexual abuse, we put them in prison. For, we've talked about this at length, you know, for a few years, and they're back out again. So if, if someone is committing a heinous act like that, right, and they're, they're convicted, they should be executed, right? And, and that should be the end of it. So again, this is not solving the problem, and it's really not doing much to help. But um, we could talk about that a little bit more, too. But he goes on and says, but also, and these are the things, you know, I really want us to look at. Because, of course, you know, Everybody wants, okay, well, of course, we don't, you know, anybody who's, uh, you know, sexual abuse, we want justice to be done. I think our point is, well, you're not, you're not doing that. You're certainly not seeing justice done. But, but you throw that in there, and then you list all these other things. He says, to boost our economy, address the causes and impacts of inflation, advance better job opportunities, and educate our students for the jobs of the future, among other things. So this is what, you know, this is what, this is important work Brian Cutler has to him and his Republican friends have, this is what they're going to do. They're going to boost our economy. They're going to deal with inflation. They're going to advance better job opportunities, and they're going to educate our children. I mean, that to me sounds like the central planner socialist right yeah, there. Yeah, it, it does indeed. Um, yes. So, so Cutler says that, and then um, one, one more thing here I want to read. Just to, I mean, this is the mindset, and this is one of the problems in general with, you know, those who would maybe call themselves conservatives and certainly the Republican Party is we're not critically thinking about what's going on here. It's just constantly left versus right, and we don't realize both of them are just taking us down the drain here. So, um, and this, I mean, this is just perfect for these legislators to say, you know, you, you, need, you need us. You know, mm -hmm. we need to get back to work for you because we're the only ones mm -hmm. that can save, that can save you. We're mm -hmm. the only ones that can boost yep. the economy. No one else can do this for yeah. you but us. And so this is from the Commonwealth uh, Foundation, and just kind of one more... Uh, kind of glance at this theme here. It says, um, lawmakers in Harrisburg are refusing to come to work. And it talks about Mark Rossi and the Democrats preventing the start of legislative session. Of course, now it's a Democrat's fault. Um, they're blocking action on uh, crucial constitutional amendments, election integrity and regulatory reform, which I will talk about. And, uh, but also important policies like educational freedom. All right now, all of a sudden, it's like, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give you this freedom back. Like, where has that been for the past 10, 15, 20 years? But here it says this, uh, we need lawmakers to come together to pass policies that improve the lives of all Pennsylvanians. And that just struck me. We need the lawmakers. We, we, yeah, need. we, we need them uh, because that's the only way we're going to improve the lives of, of Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania. So uh, tell House lawmakers why you need them to get back to work. Um, on and on it goes. So basically, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is what's happening in the PA House. Uh, it's a bit of a soap opera because, uh, especially with Representative Cutler and I think 11 other or 15 other House Republicans voting for Mark Rossi, the Democrat, and now, of course, Mark Rossi is 
being a Democrat and eh, doing what he should do for his party and waiting for the, um, the special elections to come in so the Democrats have a, a majority in the House. Um, and so here we are. We have the, you know, the message being sent out. Hey, we need our legislators back in, you know, back in business. Um, so let's start to talk about this, Joel. I think last year Pennsylvania passed around 150 new laws, roughly. Um, and I think previous year is 100 or something. So, you know, uh, certainly there's been a lot of laws have been passed last year, the year before, the year before that, the year before that, the year before that. And now all of a sudden, here we are. And if we don't get more laws, Joel, now our state's going to suffer. I just think this is kind of a, seems a little disingenuous to me. And I think if I'm honest, I'd rather say I would, I would prefer the House to stay closed indefinitely. If you're not going to enforce biblical law, all these other laws are, are just going to shackle us. So let's, um, let's get into it right now. I mean, <clears throat> let's, start talk, let's talk about the mindset, Joel, that I think we would agree is, is subconsciously or we've adopted it in our society that the legislators, that we need them, that they're our saviors. And in this case, our saviors need help getting back to work. So how would you address that, that mindset? Where does that mindset come from? that, you know, we need the legislators and they're the only ones. I mean, and for Cutler to say something like, hey, we're going to do all this stuff. I mean, and the people still to still believe it after yeah. all these years. Yeah. Where, do, where does that, where's that coming from? Yeah, I, here's how I would be happy if they came back in session. How about if you start by repealing? Um, you actually pass nothing new. How about if you spend the rest, next legislative session, repealing the nonsense that you put into practice? Uh, in the in the previous years, uh, and how many? I, you know, if we have 150 new laws, right, or new codes, if you will, Chris, uh, I'd be interested to know how many of uh, th those those are supposed to be solving problems, right? We pass this new code mm -hmm. to solve a problem. I'd like to know how many of those problems were actually created by laws, codes that they passed in uh, before. But that's, that's a way to keep your job, isn't it, right? You keep on creating problems, right. and then you get to keep on... Oh, it's perfect. You get yeah. to keep on solving them, right? right? It, 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 it's really good. Mark Twain, or a gentleman by the name of Gideon Tucker, came up with this comment, which I thoroughly... I, and I'm no Mark Twain fan, but it's his, his comment, no man's life, liberty, or property. This is either Mark Twain or Gideon Tucker. No man's life, liberty, or property are safe while the legislature is in session. Mm. Now, early you read like, we're gonna create jobs, you know, Cutler's, right? We, we, we mm -hmm. you know, new job. How, how's he gonna do that? Uh, you know, has he got, is, he's got a farm going on or maybe a, maybe a, a drugstore chain he's, he's starting? How is he going to create jobs here? I, I, I would truly like to know. Uh, I, I, again, I keep, I, 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 this is just too easy, I keep beating it up, but you, you know, FDR, right? We're going to put a chicken in every pot. That's how long this nonsense has been going on mm -hmm. since before you and I were born. We're going to put a chicken in every pot. You know, when he said that, Chris, most people, a lot of people didn't have access to chickens. I mean, for him to be able to say that, people are like, oh, I'd love to have a chicken. You know, that would just be great. You know, I, 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 chicken is way either way too expensive, too hard to get, mm -hmm. right? Now chickens are like everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Well, who? Why do we have chickens everywhere now? Was that because FDR like instituted a, a chicken in every pot policy? Right. Was was there was there a uh, you know how they do these bills right and they always name them like the opposite of what they're what they are right, right. like like Re respect for marriage act right right, right? was there a, a chicken in every pot act that was passed and, and now we all presto we have chickens in every pot it's it's maddening to me because. There are, you're taking away from the people who actually do the work, is, mm -hmm. is what you're doing. Um, you know, right now, um, jobs. How do you get a good job? Well, I mean, you can't drive, I, I cannot drive down the road, Lancaster County, without seeing a billboard somewhere mm -hmm. about people hiring. I mean, oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's like they're everywhere, right? right? And then, and they're not even asking anymore, well, do you have a high school diploma? Right. They don't even care. Can you do the job or not? It'd be better if you don't at this point. At, at, at this point, school. yeah. I don't, uh, Chris, I've never <laughs> told you about my uh, what, my college professor that I had. Um, did I ever tell you this about this guy? I might have. I think he did. <clears throat> yeah. Um, anyway, my college. I have a college professor. 
he proposed handing out a uh, high school diploma along with a birth certificate when a child is right, born. Right. Because he said, he said we, know what a, uh, we, we know what a birth certificate means. Well, that color, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we don't know what a high school diploma right. means. Can't well, even read half the well, time. Well, color's going to fix that because we need oh, to yeah. educate our students. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to educate our students. No one ever got educated before the state introduced public education, right? Right. We all just ran, ran on a, bu a bunch of dopes. So it, it's... When you, when you glorify the state like what's happening here, when you glorify the state, what you do then is you demean, you diminish the contributions that other people do that actually do make our lives better. You know, to hear that list that you just read, it's like, man, my, li my, li my life is really going to be rotten until, until the legislature gets back in session. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'd rather, Chris, if I could just, if they all, the bureaucrats, the legislators, if, generally speaking, if we just pay them to do nothing, mm -hmm. oh yeah, just stay home. Yeah. Well, I'll pay the money. Right. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah, but but that, I mean, you mentioned that you create the problems and you solve them, and this is a classic case of that. I mean, and and Representative Cutler, I mean, is just the the perfect politician. I mean, he he's going to go behind, you know. Behind his, the backs, as it were, of, of the, the Republicans and vote for the Democrat. And then he's going to use that as a situation to say, look, you know, you, you need to, to call on the Democrats to get us back to work. All these problems, because, you I know, mean, I think he would say, oh, yeah, no, I agree that there's too much government regulation. And I've heard him say that. And then so we need to get in there and, and, and try to solve some of these things. Um, but he's still operating from the same mindset that, hey, the government is the one that's going to do this. Instead of saying this whole thing is broken um, because it goes fundamentally, fundamentally against, you know, who is the savior of society. And I want to talk more about that. You know, Christ is the savior of society. And when you reject Christ as savior, you're going to look for other saviors. And the legislators are the saviors of Pennsylvanians right now. And the, the Republicans just buy right into it. And, you know, they can use a situation and say, well, yeah, we, this is the Democrats' fault that we're not meeting, and we need to, we need to get behind our Republican legislators because they're going to solve the problems. Um, and to your point, yeah, I mean, all these job people are looking for employees. What, what do we need, you know, the, the government to do um, other than stop getting involved in that? Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the this idea of the state being the savior. You mentioned glorify the state. Um, I want to read a quote here from uh, someone you introduced me to, and you've, I think, quoted him before, Jean-Marc Bertou. And he says, uh, this is the problem with legislators. They have a compulsion to constantly alter laws, uh, constantly write new laws, alter laws, constantly be meddling with the law. And that comes from their usurpation of divine sovereignty for at the end of the day, only God holds legislative power. So, I mean, let's talk a little bit more about that, Joel, because it's just so ingrained. I mean, people are so used to the idea that, well, that's what legislators are supposed to do. They write laws, and that's what they do. That's what we need them to do. But can you just dissect that a little bit? I mean, I know you've already talked on it just a little bit more, how, how we can get freed from that mindset and the idea here that, no, we, we, we actually don't need laws to save us. Right. And people might say, well, you guys are all about biblical law. Yeah, there's a place for law. But what we have done as a society is, is taken Christ as the Savior, rejected that, and saying man-made law will save us now. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be all about, uh, Chris, I'd be all about man-made law. I would say that we, we have nothing else if we didn't already have divine law, mm -hmm. if we did not already have divine revelation. Uh, quick example. Um, you know, and this is for all my good friends who want to tell me that the Bible only tells you how to get to heaven. It doesn't tell you about anything else. You know, God on multiple occasions condemns the idea of two sets of weights that you carry around. And he said you can't even have them in your back. You, you, you cannot even have them in your pocket. You know, one set of weights to sell, one, another set of weights to buy. Well, there, that is legislative uh, docu uh, comment, commentary, if you will. You're not allowed to do that. that. We're not talking about getting to heaven right now. Mm -hmm. You don't get to heaven if you just have one set of weights. Say, oh yeah, go to get to heaven. Well, I carried around once. No, 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 it's about, it's about Christ. Mm -hmm. So what is that even doing in the, in the Bible? Because the Bible does have legislation. 
And so when we, when we call people together, and we call them that, that horrible term, lawmakers, uh, which is a, a, a terrible term, if we already have divine law, Chris, then you're either a law confirmer or you're a law breaker or you're a law attacker if we already have divine law. What else can you be? But you can never be a lawmaker. You can be a law perverter, mm -hmm. but you cannot be a lawmaker. You can be a code maker, if you will, or a code perverter, if, if, if you want to. In fact, I was just uh, having a conversation about this with uh, someone recently, talking about the fact that, well, well I'll just put it this way. Why, why does the state, and, and, and I want to talk about this a little bit, why does the state constantly cause problems and then show up to fix them? Mm -hmm. why, why is that necessary? And here's why. We, we have the, um, in Christian circles, we have the lordship salvation uh, discussion, right? Mm -hmm. You know, is Christ Savior, not Lord, whatever. Well, I'll tell you what, when it comes to the state, I can solve that. Because you show me a Savior, Chris, and I'll show you a Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they can be Savior, they get to be Lords. Mm -hmm. And that is why they keep doing these kinds of things. That's also why if we don't have the Scriptures, I had this conversation just this morning, um, if, if we don't have the scriptures, how are we, are we, are we going to be able to tell anything? Um, Lenin apparently famously said something like, and this is a conversation again that I had. He, he apparently said, constantly accuse people of doing what you're doing. Accuse others. He says that will create confusion. Mm -hmm. right? Now, Lenin was a powerful state leader. Now, if he knew that, if, if Lenin knew that you can create confusion by accusing people, other people of doing what you're doing, and it's always going to be a, a, a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to accuse somebody of doing a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a bad thing. And there is Lenin telling us who he is with that statement, right? <laughs> he's, a, he's just a really bad guy. But if you believe him, you're just going to be confused. And where are you going to go, Chris, for actual truth? Where are you going to go? Are you going to go to politicians? Are you going to go to people who already have a history of lying? You better have some other source, and it is the Bible, and it does give us legislation, and we can, Chris, we can compare the biblical legislation to whatever is going on in any Harrisburg house or any Washington, D.C. house. Right. Yeah, and to your point on uh, accusing the other people of doing what they're doing, this, this, I just read about this um, when this was a Democrat, uh, I think a state senator, it's on the Lancaster Patriot website. Um, He's pushing for, and I think we've talked briefly about this before, about these, these hate crimes, which are actually thought crimes. And of course, one of the charges against the, the Christian position is, oh, you want a theocratic state where people are going to be punished for what they believe, which isn't actually true, because biblical law doesn't punish people for what they believe, but the, our state legislators do. So, so they have a law saying, okay, it's not... You know, if you, if you assault this person or steal from them or whatever, okay, yeah, that's a crime, but we're going to add another crime, which is what were you thinking when you were doing it? And, you know, did you have any ill will or do you believe something negative about this person's, and, and they, he wants to add these things, uh, their sexual orientation, their race or perceived race. So if you think they're a certain race, whatever that means, and you, and you have ill will towards that perceived race, well, now you've committed another crime, a thought crime. So th th this, is what, this is the fruit of humanistic legislation, and it's a perfect example of we, we have thought crime in, in America now, and it's not coming from biblical law. Yeah, um, I, I wondered, I, actually this week I wondered if I'm committing a thought crime. I'm sure you are. I, I, okay. Yeah. If anyone is in the county, it's okay. you. Well, I'll make a confession right now, right? So people, this, this is a so-called Black History Month or whatever, right? And so some people are excited because they say in the Super Bowl this year, we have two black quarterbacks, okay. right, for the first time ever, right? And Patrick Mahomes is, I, I thought about this with perceived race, right? He's perceived to be black, but he looks pretty white to me, and apparently his mother was white, okay. right? And I, I, I mean, at what point do, do you become whatever race? And, and how, how are you, how's it, Barack Obama was a black president, right? Had a, um, a white mother, right? Communist mother, whatever she was, right? Oh, she was definitely communist. 
I don't know what perceived race she apparently was, but a lot of people perceive her race as white, right? Mm -hmm. So how is he black? Mm -hmm. what, are we, what are we doing here? But I was thinking, I actually think Patrick Mahomes is white. I, 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 yeah, I look that's at a thought him. crime. You're guilty. I think, okay, guilty. Okay, <laughs> I confess to a thought crime. <laughs> I, had the, I had this week, and I'm still having it, by the way. If anybody can convince me he's black uh, for whatever reason. Anyway, yeah, no, I interrupted you. That's okay. I mean, yeah, with this obsession with, with, uh, with, with race and perceived race is another one of those things. Do it, you, you accuse the other side of being all about race when, in fact, you're, you're obsessed with it. You're obsessed with it. With obsessed it. With Can't it. get away from right. it. Talk about it all the time. Right. Obsess, obsession, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> All right, yeah, I want to read this from, from Rush Juni to what you were talking about. And, and he hits the nail on the head here. I mean, he saw all this stuff in the 60s. Um, he says, humanistic law aims at saving man and remaking society. I mean, is that not what we read from the Republican legislatures? Like, okay, we, we're, we're going to solve these problems. We're going to educate our students. We're going to create, you know, the better job opportunities. Uh, he goes on and says that the humanistic approach to law posits that salvation is an act of the state. And that goes back to your point. Uh, who's the savior? Well, not, they're the Lord, uh, which is uh, correct, right? But the state has you, tried to usurp that from Christ, which they won't be able to do. They're going to fail. Um, and he says, it is civil government uh, which regenerates man in the humanistic view and society and brings man into a paradise on earth. As a result, for the humanist, social action is everything. Man must work to pass, here's the key, the right set of laws because his salvation depends on it. I mean, that is the description of politics today, not, not left or right, all of it, because it's, all of it is based on humanistic, a humanistic worldview. That we have, the, the church, you know, has said, well, Christ is not to be named in the public sphere. I mean, just think about that. Like, where in the Bible are you going to defend that? Find in the Bible where it says that the kings of the earth should not name Christ. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, that yeah. you know, prove that, that Christ does not want to be acknowledged in the public square. You can't make that case. But the church has said, oh, yeah, sure. Don't name Christ in the public square. Well, now you've created what's called a vacuum, right? Okay, who is going to step in and fill the role as Savior if you remove Christ from the public sphere? Well, it's going to be the state. Um, because... You know, Christ as Savior, he has earned the right to, to, be, to be Lord in one sense. Of course, he was always divine, the Son of God, but he came to earth to defeat the devil mm -hmm. and plunder his goods. And he did that. And so now he is Lord, you know, enthroned, ascended, and he is ruling and reigning. And if we try to say, well, no, you're not king, well, there's going to be a usurper that comes in there and says, okay, well, we'll, we'll be king, we'll be Savior for you. And that's what the state is. And until... I mean, until the professing church can understand that, I mean, they're the ones behind, you know, voting for more and more of these so-called conservative Republicans who just continue to act as Savior. And yeah. they're, they're not going to save. Yeah. I, I, and I would want to know, too, this. I mean, we, we want, you know, the conservative side, a lot of Christian influence there. We want Christian legislators, right? Now, if the Christian legislator says, you know what, I'm not bringing Christ into this because I, you know, this is a secular realm now, right? Right. I'm not going to talk about Christ. I'm not going to talk the Bible. Listen, listen, to, listen to what Christ has to say about you. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Uh, also, he said in another place, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with, with all your strength. Okay. I want to know how a so-called Christian legislator legislator, loves God with all his mind while not bringing him into the legislative session. Right. How, how can you do that? You, you have stopped loving him with your mind. You've definitely stopped lo loving him with your heart and with your soul and your strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you have. And so what they're saying, Joel, is, okay, I think that the, the main argument people are going to respond to us is, well, look, okay, maybe some of that's true, but voter ID laws regulatory reform, and educational freedom. I mean, don't you agree with those things, Chris? Um, and I think there would be aspects of them that I do. For example, educational freedom. If it was truly going to be educational freedom, of course I would agree with it, which educational freedom would mean the civil government is not involved in education at all. Yeah. Any sort of involvement. That's true educational freedom. <laughs> and that's true education. 
any, 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 tr any government involvement is going to involve coercion here, and it's going to involve the coercion of taking your money or of dictating what is being taught and not taught. Um, so, yeah, those are going to be presented as the things. Well, yes, okay, the government, yeah, there's a problem, but we need, we need them to meet now because if we don't get the voter ID laws and if we don't get the regulatory reform and we don't get the educational freedom, you know, well, that's it then. And I'm just not buying it, Joel. I'm, well, I'm, yeah. I, I want to know why we need voter ID laws. Do we have a problem with voting? Because I've, I've been hearing from both sides of the aisle that this is a, the, the 2020 was a uh, most fair election ever. Sure. Uh, so, and both been saying that. People have been saying, no, there's fraud going on here. And both Democrats and Republicans are saying, no, 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 nothing wrong here. So what do we need voter ID laws for? There's, we don't have a problem, do we? I, that's what I've been hearing for the last couple of years. Yeah, and I would just say something as well. I mean, I think there should be integrity in elections because that's, you know, honesty and, and just weights and measures. But at this point, Joel, I, 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 I mean, it doesn't really matter who we're voting for because we continue to vote for left and right statists. Right, so my, my concern is I'd rather the House not meet and people start to actually think and say, okay, we're, we're perpetuating this problem by voting for these, these Republican lawmakers, as they call themselves, um, and, and that's part of the problem. So, yes, there should be election integrity, but this goes down to we need righteous men. Right? That, at the end of the day, if we don't have righteous people in the society and righteous men that we elect to, to, to be civil leaders— None of these man-made regulations are going to mean anything. And so this is just a, it's just a, oh, oh, we need the voter ID laws. We need the reform. We need the educational freedom. Um, it, it's going to be the same thing next year. There's going to be another hundred laws. Uh, we're going to be at the same place unless God is gracious with us and grants us a reformation where people say, you know what? No, Christ is to be named in the public square. I mean, that, that's basically what it comes down to. Do, is Christ Lord of the public square or not? And if he is then obey him. Um, so, you know, th that's the argument. Hey, we, we need these very key things and uh, they need to get back to doing the people's work. Uh, and then, you know, we're going to, we, we pay their salary, we, we pay their benefits and we continue to support the ever increasing nanny state. I'm just not buying it. I, I have no interest in contacting my legislators and saying, you need to get back to work. I don't want you to get back to work because all you do is mess things up because your very office by nature um, is going against Scripture because you're creating all these laws. Now, um, I don't think there's one man really even in the House who's willing to, to stand on that, to stand on Christ as Lord and lose an election on principle. I haven't seen it. Um, oh, no, no, because it's, 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 it's a far greater sin. Let's talk about sins here for a second. It's a car, far greater sin to lose an election right. than it is to stand up for Christ. Oh, it, to deny Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. excuse me, to yeah. deny Christ. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And deny Christ, they'll forgive me for that. But to lose an election, oh, oh people, no. The, yeah, the people will never forgive you. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that yeah. because you stood on principle. Well, I mean, and that, there you go. That's another example of who's, who's the God of the system, right? Who's, yeah. who, who's the one that you don't want to offend? Yep. And in this case, it's, you know, it, and it goes with maybe it's the demos, the God of the people. Like, but you're exactly right, Joel. We're more concerned about winning an election than honoring the Lord. So, and, and think about that. And the people are going to say, well, we're trying to achieve these good ends. We're, we're, you know, we need to compromise here to achieve these good ends. Well, it's not working. Yeah, yeah. It's not working. And more importantly, um, you're dishonoring the Lord mm -hmm. of, of the state who is Christ, the true Lord. So, yeah, these guys are going to go in there. They're not going to. They're going to compromise. They're going to vote for a budget with billions of dollars to fund the government education system, right? I mean, this is just. And then they're going to pretend they want to get back to work to make our lives better uh, with educational freedom. Like I'm sure Cutler supported the billions of dollars going into the government education system, and now he, he has the audacity to say, and all these other representatives, well, we need to get back to work for you to solve the educational problems. You created the problems. By, by voting for these budgets and perpetuating the system, and it's, it's maddening. Oh, we need the lawmakers as if that's going to save us, right? It aren't, aren't, as you mentioned, they're the ones with all their regulations, all their man-made laws who have led to the high energy costs, who have led to the, the grocery prices, the failing schools, the unfriendly business environment. It was the government that did that, but now they're going to save us. Yes, um, all, all the time. So, so what I want to do right now, if I may, is... Uh, 
take over the podcast do it. And, and, and talk for like 15 minutes. Okay. I'm, I'm not, not going to do that. But there's some things I want, I, 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 that I just have to talk about. One of them is, Chris, we, we hear this all the time. People hate to be lied to, mm-hmm. right? No. If it's the right lie... They love it. And in fact, um, in Revelation 22, 15, we're talking about those who are outside of heaven, right? And um, here's John talking, and, and he's saying, blessed are they that do his commandments, Christ's commandments, might be a good place to start, no matter who you are, a legislator or, or Joe Sixpack, that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. For without are dogs, sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loves and makes a lie. Right there, John puts the, puts the two in the same category. Mm-hmm. That the one who loves it is just as bad as the one who told it. Now, here's where we need to talk about, j- just briefly, about the people that are electing these liars mm-hmm. uh, again and again. And... I know you're, at IRBC, I recently spoke, preached about the, the fact that, well, it was Election Day sermon, the fact that the, the, the character of the voters is actually more important mm-hmm. than the character of the, uh, of the one running for office. Mm-hmm. They're both extremely important. But how much longer, Chris, are we going to vote for people who lie to us? And in the end, it's something like, well, our liar is better than their liar. Exactly. Th- that's, that's kind of where we're going with this. And so what I want to do, not just kidding about taking over, but I want to, I, I want to talk about um, a guy named Machiavelli, which every single person who ever voted should know about him. Chris, we should all know about the dude. And so what I want to do is I want to just kind of interact because there, um, someone uh, uh, wrote a book called The Municipal Machiavelli. Okay. And this will make sense here in a moment. And, um, and the subtitle is Machiavelli is the Prince. Machiavelli wrote this book called The Prince. It was about keep gaining power and staying, and staying in power, state power here, right? Gain it, keep it, how to do it. And people refer to it all the time, Machiavelli's the Prince. Okay, so the subtitle is Machiavelli's the Prince, rewritten for municipal politicians. Yeah, for, for Brian Cutler. Yeah, that's right, that's right. He might, he might uh, okay, see if, see if, you know, this makes any sense, okay? Um, appearances, says the author, can not, not only can be deceptive, as Machiavelli points out, um, but appearances also should, should be deceptive. Mm. Should be. And I ask right now, whether you vote for a Republican or Democrat, conservative or liberal, do you think that they have a problem, uh, not publicly, oh, no, I've never heard you. What you see is what you get. I didn't even seek this, this office. The people rose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Stop. Anyway, appearances also should be deceptive. He, meaning Machiavelli, was keenly aware from his years as a diplomat that there was one way a ruler should appear and another way a ruler should act. A little deception could go a long way. And now he's quoting Machiavelli here, right? Everyone admits how praiseworthy it is in a prince to keep his word and to behave with integrity rather than cunning. Nevertheless, our experience has been that those princes who have done great things have considered keeping their word of little account and have known how to beguile men's minds by shrewdness and cunning. In the end, these princes have overcome those who have relied on keeping their word. Hmm. Now I want to ask this question. How sure are you that the person you vote for is going to keep his word? How sure? How much confidence do you have? They're either, either listening to Christ, not too many of those that I can tell, mm-hmm. almost none or none. Mm-hmm. You know who you get to listen to? Machiavelli. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. the third way. No, there's not a third way here. You either keep your word or you don't. You either keep your word because you fear Christ, you, f- you fear the God who will call you to account, or you fear not being reelected. And how do you get reelected? Machiavelli and this, this author, they pointed out, if keeping your word is going to keep you from being reelected, mm-hmm. then don't keep your word. Mm-hmm. Chris, do the right thing. Break your word. Right. All right, ran over. No, that was great. And the thing is, um, yeah, and, and this is kind of the way it operates in, in, in the house. And, I mean, I, I've had these conversations uh, with people that are there. And 
hey, I will vote for something that I don't agree with simply because I don't want to upset the apple cart. I don't want to get on the wrong side of leadership. Uh, I don't want to you know, upset anybody. As long as we have that, we're not going to see any progress. And so you mentioned in, in your sermons and just now that you know, the, the, the people, the righteousness of the people is key. I think Calvin said when God wants to judge a people, he gives them wicked rulers. Um, and so you could have this argument, well, is, do we need a righteous ruler first and, and then the people? I mean, I think there's elements of both. When you have a righteous ruler, he does influence the people by, uh, in that limited way, declaring God's law. But the people, I think, to Calvin's point, when God wants to judge a people for their apostasy, he gives them wicked rulers. And that's what, that's what we have. And so, I mean, my plea is to, to the people that instead of writing your, your representatives and saying, get back to work, write them and say, repent of rejecting Amen. Christ. Yeah. Right? We, we, yes. until, until we have that, because yes. at any level, the, 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 people, the people are the only way that really we're going to see real change. And starting at the lowest level of nullification, if we have township supervisors, county commissioners who want to honor Christ, well, then you can start to have some, some opposition to these mandates. But as long as we go along to get along and we continue to keep Christ out of the public square, this is not solving anything. So for me to write my representatives and say, I-, I want you to get back to work, to me it would be, I mean, that would just be wrong. I don't want you to get back to work because you're going back in there with an anti-Christ worldview. And the only thing it's going to produce is problems. Yeah, the, the hypocrisy, it, it's in, intriguing to me. You know, Christ comes and he talks, uh, he, he, he addresses the Old Testament scriptures and embraces all of scripture. Interestingly, though, we have one entire chapter, it's Matthew 23, against one specific sin. And I don't know, um, in, in Christ's ministry, we don't have that in any other, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Uh, we have him addressing certain types of sins in his churches. For example, in, in Revelation 2 and 3, seven churches, mm-hmm. and Christ gives specific commentary about the, uh, to, to each church, uh, some encouraging, uh, some condemning, quite frankly. None of it neutral. <laughs> right. If you like neutrality, uh, what Christ had to say to his churches in, in Revelation 2 or 3, you won't find it there no. so, uh, at all. You have to go to the government schools because they're neutral. They're, they're oh, neutral, yeah, right? They, they, right, yeah. You can't, you can't bring up the most, uh, you, you can't even quote in many cases the bestseller of all time, the Bible, but they're nice and neutral. Yeah. I mean, why are we, you, you know, blame us, Chris. How long have we been putting up, in Christian circles, how long have we been putting up with this? Mm-hmm. How long? And so now we have legislators who are acting like the Bible's irrelevant. Mm-hmm. And what, we're a little upset about that now? Yeah. We why, should, why should we be? Y- yeah, this if, is like we allowed it. Pr- pretty, pretty normal and, 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 and natural thing go, going on here. But you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Cutler, and uh, he is a great politician. I mean, imagine being from, what, Southern Lancaster County, right, where it's pretty conservative down there. Mm-hmm. And we know what he's done. We, we, we know what he's done. He is a hypocrite. Because what he did was he made a deal with the Democrats, knowing that they're probably going to get the majority, right? And exchange will vote for a Democrat um, m- m- uh, le- leader, speaker, if you will. And, and then he's got something prom- promised coming back to him. We know that's what he's done. But getting back to what Christ talked about in Matthew 23, right. he laid the wood to hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. Chris, that should really make us all sit up and, t- and take notice. What we have here is Machiavelli. Think about it. We have Jesus Christ. You know, I, 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 I picture, you know, a, 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 a battleship, right? Lining up, right? And there's hypocrisy over here, the Fort Hypocrisy, right? And he's lining up and he's opened up every single gun on hypocrisy. Right. Club Lamb, right? And Machiavelli and our politicians... That's exactly what they want to be the most. Right. They want to be hypocrites. They are embracing hypocrisy. Can we, un- can we be surprised mm-hmm. yeah, at the that, mess we're in? That's the point. And that's why you're going to have this group that are going to say, well, no, we oppose Cutler. And, you know, we, we were betrayed in some of these representatives. And, you know, it's a nice story. And, you know, there's some truth there, of course. That, but we err if we think, oh, yeah, that's the problem, you know. Just Cutler's the problem. We need to get him out right. and get these other conservative Republicans in there, maybe like a, 
uh, a, a Tom Jones, and then, th you know, that's going to solve the problem. And I say no, because from everything I've seen, they're going to approach this the same fundamental way, yes. which is humanistic law can save. Yep. I mean, that's th their job. I mean, that's what right. they're going in for. I mean, Absolutely. and if you had, and you've said this before, you know, if you had a righteous a righteous magistrate or someone righteous in, in, in the House of Representatives, I mean, I think there'd be a couple things they would do. I think, number one, they would refuse to take taxpayer-funded salary and take voluntary contributions. Number two, they would mm -hmm. reject any, any legislation that is not biblical law. Like, we don't need, the, you know, all these other things. Um, but none of these men are going to do that because it's going to cost them, and, well, they might not get elected. But until we, until I've said this, we need men who are, Willing to stand, but more importantly, Joel, we need men who are willing to fall for the sake of righteousness. That's more important. All these guys that say, oh, yeah, I'll stand for righteousness. I'll stand for the truth. But will you fall for it? Will you lose everything for it? Will you be willing to not get reelected? And until you are, you're not worth, you're not worth anything in, in, in the kingdom of Christ. And the, and Chris, they're making a huge mistake here. Because another thing that Christ said, what, of what profit, mm -hmm. what, what are you really profiting Gaining the whole world. For, for, forget about being reelected. Right. <laughs> Christ compared it to the ultimate thing, right? What is bigger, humanly speaking, Chris, than gaining the whole world? What's bigger? Nothing, mm -hmm. right? And Christ called it no profit at all. Not a little bit of profit. Not even like, oh, that's pretty good, but no, no, no. No profit. No profit whatsoever if you lose your own soul. Right. And these politicians, conservative, liberals, they're selling their souls. Yeah. Yeah, to, to the savior of the state. And so that kind of brings us back to, to where we started here. You know, Cutler, uh, these other representatives, um, they can't save us right now. Mm -hmm. These are saviors that need our help uh, because the, the Democrats are preventing our saviors from uh, doing the people's work. Mm -hmm. um, so we got, we got to help our saviors out here. Mm -hmm. um, and if we don't, right, I mean, if we stand on principle and say, well, no, um, then we're not going to have any saviors in Harrisburg. Right, And right. Our, our, our state is going to crumble. Chris, that's, that's a phenom uh, point there about saving our saviors, right? We save our saviors. Uh, I, all I can think of is Gideon once again, right? Gideon, who uh, cuts down the uh, idol of Baal, right? Mm -hmm. And then the people are mad. Hey, you cut down our idol, right? And then Gideon's father says, well, if Baal's such a big shot, maybe he can save himself. Right, right, right. Yeah. But that's the same thing. The people are, hey, you need to save our Savior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're our Lords and Savior, but they need our help right now. Yeah. And so, uh, write, you know, write to them and, and ask them to, to save us. So we, we've been duped by this because, you know, we've fallen for it. Nothing else is going to lead to change. And so we just continue to hope in this humanistic thing. And there's so much more we could read here. Uh, you know, Bert, Bert, Bertu says that when you take this humanistic approach, uh, law becomes arbitrary, and he calls it the plaything of the fantasies of the judges, of social goings-on, of activist groups, and of opinion-based political movements. And that's, the, I've said... The plaything, that is good. The plaything of the fantasies wow. of the judges. And that's what it is. The law is, it's no longer about righteousness. I've said it many times, you know, it's no longer about what is just and unjust. And, and, and these guys don't even pretend that anymore. Mm -hmm. No, the law now is about us saving society. It's about us advancing this cause. And, and the Republicans criticize the Democrats of doing that, but the Republicans do the exact same thing. We're going to advance our cause, and we're going to use the law as a tool to reshape society. And, and that's not biblical law. So, uh, yeah, I say better if the whole thing crashes to the ground. Um, you know, and, and long-term vision here, Joel, I mean, we, we don't have much time left, so I have to wrap this up, but... Um, as, we, as we, we look at the world around us, we look at the history of the world and the history of Christendom mm -hmm. and, and what Christ is doing now. Christ is on his throne, and he is in the process of putting all his enemies under his feet. I mean, you read that Psalm 110, 1 Corinthians 15, Hebrews, a couple times in Hebrews, quoting from, going back to Psalm 110, that Christ is putting all his enemies under his feet. And so, therefore, it follows that a humanistic law system is on its way out. Right, Christ is ruling and reigning, and we ha and we have to have the long game here. And this is what is kind of annoying when when you bring the biblical worldview, and people say, "Oh, yeah, well, I agree with that, but we got to play the long game here and compromise a little bit." And if we stand on principle, well, we're not going to see the results. Which I think is actually they have it backwards. Mm -hmm. If you're playing the long game, you're willing to lose now by standing on principle because you know in the end that's going to lead to blessing. So. 
the long, you know, the long-term vision of Christendom is that Christ rules and reigns. He, he puts all his enemies under his feet. So my question is, why are we, if we claim to be Christian, trying to prop up a system that Christ is destroying? That's, that's the heart of this issue. We are trying to prop up a system that Christ is in the process of destroying. How are we going to be successful at that? So as long as we continue to play this game with these man-made, this man-made law, these, this, the, we need a legislative session to save us, and we, and we say, well, yeah, I don't agree with all this, but, I, but it's wrong what the Democrats are doing. I want my Republicans in there. And if I don't have a choice between I'm going to choose the lesser of two evils, I'm going to vote for the Cutler or this other guy, and then even these grassroots guys who still prop up the government school system, who still believe in forced tax, taxation, who reject biblical law, they're, 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 from the same, they're cut from the same cloth. Well, I'm going I'm to I'm do that. You're propping up a system that Christ is destroying. And so the long game is to say, well, Christ is going to destroy this. Let's have no part in propping it up. And people have a very hard time understanding that because they say, well, what, what's going to happen if we, if we don't support the Republicans? The Democrats are going to take over. Well, what's happened with the Republicans? <laughs> the Democrats yeah, yeah, have yeah. taken over. Yeah. So better, right. better to say, you know what? We reject all this. Let it burn to the ground because Christ is destroying it. Why are we trying to get in his way? Yeah, I have no uh, comeback for that whatsoever. Uh, I, I can't imagine why we would want to support something that Christ is destroying. You know, Christ is just going to destroy all his enemies, all the idols, all the pretenders, all the fakes, frauds, and hypocrites. He will destroy them all. Great question. And, and are, are, are we not supporting them? And again, going back to, well, it's, it's our liar. It's our hypocrite. Mm -hmm. And... You, you know, it's not as bad. I, no, I, I got to decide. Hey, I got to decide between hypocrites here. What do you want me to do, Chris? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do? And to me, it's easy. You know, I, I'm going to go back to the Old Testament where, where the children of Israel wanted, made that same choice in 1 Samuel 8. You know, we want a king like the other nations. Right. That's what we want. We want to be like that. You know what? You were pretty unique, guys. You were, that's... That's what was great about you. You were not like the other nations. Right. You, you got out of slavery. You, you, you came through the Red Sea. You came into the land of Canaan. You became ex pre pretty successful, quite frankly. Um, during the time of the judges, I mean, there was, we sometimes forget, they didn't go from uh, you, you know, the Red Sea right to, right to Samuel mm -hmm. uh, and, and Saul. There was a lot of good things that happened in between there, good and bad. Mm -hmm. But at least they didn't have an overweening uh, federal government. They didn't have a king mm -hmm. like the other nations. Right. And what we see happen in the book of Judges, every time they did what, what we would say is wrong today, Chris. We would say, you know, you have other, other nations that are trying to invade you, trying to take over. Oh, man, you, you better get yourself a big, strong central government here. Mm -hmm. you, you, there, there's some, you need to levy a tax and you need to rate. That didn't happen one time. Mm -hmm. They called on God. Yep. And God raised up from among them leaders, and they didn't have a strong standing army even. Mm -hmm. They didn't even have it. They had tremendous freight. But when they, called, when they wanted to be like those other nations, now they really started to have some real serious problems. One of the things, I, um, Machiavelli here, um, going on with this, um, everyone admits how praiseworthy it is in a prince to keep his word and to behave with integrity rather than cunning. Nevertheless, our experience has been that those princes um, who have done great things have considered keeping their word of little account. Ah, I read that already. This is what I wanted to read. Sorry. S sorry. Occasionally, words must serve to veil the facts. That's what I wanted, to veil the facts. Why is it, Chris, that we put so much stock into our politicians' words and so little stock in what they actually do? Mm -hmm. And Peter, I think, um, addresses this. Second Peter, he says this. He says, for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. Mm -hmm. So we're talking liberty, but personally we're slaves of corruption. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we be asking that about our politicians and our pastors, quite frankly? Right. And, and this whole thing of, uh, well, personally, I know personally he's got problems, but publicly he's our guy, blah, blah, blah. Peter says no. Mm -hmm. You can't separate the two. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what, I mean, and it's basically, just, it's a political ploy. Okay, the, the constituent base, they want more freedom. 
So we're, we're going to promise them, okay, yeah, we're going we're gonna to reduce the educational regulations. We're going to reduce these other regulations. But then when you look at what they actually stand for and vote for, it's status, government-controlled, education, billions of dollars, forced taxation. Like when Ahmed says, oh, I'm going to reduce the tax burden, I'll believe that when he stops taking a salary from forced taxation. Right? It's hypocrisy. Yeah. But it, they're, they're being politicians. They're saying, well, let's, let's tell people what they want to hear, and then let's do something else. And until the Republican voter base wakes up to that, I mean, th that's, it's just going to continue to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, none of this is surprising. I mean, what Cutler did, I mean, that people are surprised by it, I mean, I think is, is kind of a revealing. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. even some of these... these Who do we blame more, Cutler or the people that yeah. believed them? And, and both the voters and the, some of these House representatives who said, oh, you know, this is, how could Cutler do this? Like, really? <laughs> this is a surprise? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like, don't you see that, this, I mean, yeah. this yeah. is what these men do. Politician! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so many problems. But I'll tell you what, one of our problems is not that the House is not meeting right now. That, that would that's not a problem right now. That's actually a good thing. Now, of course, uh, the Democrats are going to get in there uh, probably with these elections anyway. And we're just going to continue the status quo until we have a change in the people's hearts to say no more. We will not compromise. We will not support people who reject Christ and our saviors in the state cannot save. And until we see that, we're going to keep looking to them to save us. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to keep being let down. So that's all I have, Joel. Anything else from you? Just once again, you show me a Savior, I'll show you a Lord. That's right. Yep. So for more information on Pastor Joel Saint, go to irbc.church. Uh, you can listen to sermons on Sermon Audio. Um, and for more information about the Lancaster Patriot, go to LancasterPatriot.com. Subscribe to our print newspaper delivered once a week right to your house. It's just $1.50 per issue. Uh, so check us out. We're covering stuff in Lancaster County and beyond. Uh, until next time, God bless and Godspeed.